What's happening everyone? It's Jesse and you guys are on my Facebook page. Today we're gonna to be drawing and painting Miguel from Coco. I'm here a little early to jump on and check out my feed, kind of prep things. Here we go. We're gonna get started promptly at about one o'clock, maybe a little bit over. Oops, let me turn down my volume. Here we go, here we go. Okay, 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 cool. All right guys. So a couple of things before we get started, and I'll repeat this again once we get going. In the comments section, if you guys notice any links, people posting links promising to take you to the live feed of this event, do not click on that stuff. Everything's going to be right here on my Facebook page, so you guys won't be going anywhere. How's it going, Joe? Robin Myers, how are you? Siri Chandra, how are you? Vidya and Veda, welcome guys, welcome back. I think all of you have painted with me before, so you guys know what this is about. Um, as you guys jump on, if you guys would, please uh, say hello to me. Let me know where you're painting from, uh, where you're joining from, and maybe who you're going to be drawing along with. A few things before we get started. Here we go. I'm already seeing some links in the comments from scammers. Do not click on those. Um, do not click on those links, okay? Again, do not click on those links that you guys see in the comment section. Ariel, uh, if you're on and you get, you could jump on and start taking care of those. That would be amazing, okay? So let's see here, ban from page. Sorry folks, I'm gonna go through here and ban some of these um, people that are posting. Again, those links, if you guys see any of these, those links in the comments, do not click on those. We'll go through and delete them as quickly as we can, but just so you guys know, um, they are scammers trying to get you guys to go somewhere else. They come on here to ruin, or try to ruin our events anyway, so. Anyhow, again, guys, please say uh, please say hello in the comments. We got about three minutes to go, so uh, before we actually get going. So as you guys are sitting there saying hello, I'm gonna go through here and see if I can delete any of this nonsense. Okay, ban from page. All right, hang on a second. Ban from page, ban buddy, and then delete. And delete. Again, folks, I apologize. Uh, this is a bit of a distraction, so I'm going through those comments and trying to delete some of those uh, some of those posts. Anyway, let's talk about what we're doing today. So I'm going to be teaching you guys how to draw Co uh, Miguel, okay, step by step. The idea is this: this is how this works. I outline a step, so I do a step on my own, and then you guys do the step after watching me. I usually give you guys about a minute, two minutes, maybe to do a step, depending on what it is, how complicated that step is. Okay, so I want you guys to understand there are pauses in between the steps that I do. This isn't anything that we're going to be rushing through. So if you're in a hurry, you know, this isn't going to be for you. You want to maybe wait for the recorded version where you can forward all the, all the talking points. But again, in between steps, I show you how to do something, and then I give you guys time to do it. In between those steps, I'll go through and answer questions, say hello to some of you that are saying hi in the comments, and that kind of stuff. I'm going to be drawing first, right? I'm going to be teaching you guys how to draw Miguel first. All you guys need is a pencil with an eraser. After we draw Miguel, we go through and paint him. The colors that we're going to be using, black, white, uh, brown, right here, brown, blue, okay, pink, and then red. Whatever colors you guys have, as long as, long as you guys have, have some colors that are kind of similar, that's all you really need. So, um, so anyway, uh, it's all you really need. But I'm using acrylic paints. If you guys have crayons, colored pencils, watercolors, markers, whatever it is that you guys have, that's what you guys are gonna use, okay? So again, we draw first and then we paint later. Of course, since I'm painting, I'm gonna be using some basic brushes that I'll talk about when we get to that point. These are basic uh, acrylic paint or all-purpose paint brushes, synthetic. Uh, nothing fancy here. If you guys have some brushes, get those ready because that's because we're going to be using those. Um, so anyway, Ariel, really quick. Yes, if you could hide those comments, delete them, hide them, or ban them first. Ban the people first, and then delete their comments. But first, before anything else, simply ban them so they don't continue posting. Okay. All right, everyone. So I mentioned I'm going to be drawing this on a an 11 by 14 inch canvas. Okay. This is what that looks like. You guys can do this on whatever you guys have. Maybe you guys are doing it on a piece of paper, 
uh, construction board, wood, whatever it is that you guys are doing on, just know that mine is going to be 11 by 14 inch canvas, just like on the original. Okay, so it's a little bit after 3 o'clock. We're about to get moving here. We are planning to do this. It's going to take about an hour and 45 minutes approximately, okay, plus or minus a little bit. So you're going to require a little bit of patience. Again, if you're in a hurry, this is it for you. We don't rush through the steps. I do a step and then there's a little pause in between, about a minute, two minutes, kind of depends for you guys to do what I've done. And then, uh, then we go to the next step, okay? Really quick, before we get moving. Tomorrow, for those of you that are interested, tomorrow I'm doing a Day of the Dead uh, themed painting, uh, uh, which is called La, La Calavera. For those of you that are familiar with the Mexican Loteria, kind of like a bingo game, uh, has pictures on it. We're doing a really cool Day of the Dead theme tomorrow, Friday. I believe we start at 4 or 6. I don't remember right now, so please look at the event if you're interested in that. I don't have the painting with me to show you guys, so I can't, I can't share that with you. But next week, we're doing this Hocus Pocus theme piece next Thursday. Okay, uh, So the event is up. Check out the information on that. I'm going to be sending out stencils to those of you that email me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. The event has all the details. I will be sending you stencils via email for those of you that want to join us on this one. Okay, So make sure you guys take a look at that. And then Friday, the following Friday, so Thursday and then Friday, we got Jack and Sally. Okay, This one is going to be a complete drawing and painting step by step. No stencils for this one. Okay, Or at least I won't be providing any stencils. Anyway, enough talking. Here we go. Get myself situated here in the front. Here's uh, we're not gonna need we're not gonna need these till later. But here's my paints laid out on a plate. I got some black, some red, some dark blue, some pink, a little bit of brown, and some white. Okay, those are the colors I'm gonna be using. Again, this will take place till later when we do the actual um, painting part of it. So for now, all you're gonna need is a pencil, pencil and eraser. So get that ready to go. Whoops, kind of set that up. Bring uh, Miguel over a little bit. Get them nice and close together. Here we go, here we go. Like I said, we're going to get right into it, folks. We're going to get moving pretty quickly here. Let me adjust my camera. Don't forget to say hello. Say hi to me. I'm all by myself in my studio. It gets a little lonely. So I need you guys to say hello. And again, tell me who you're, if you're painting in a group or whatever, let me know who's with you. Kind of cool. Kind of cool to know. And then also at the end of the session, when you guys are all done with your paintings, please send me pictures of your masterpieces and of your groups. If you guys can include pictures of yourselves in, in the pictures, that's fantastic. I love to see who's painting with me. It's always really cool. All right, guys, anytime I teach somebody how to draw, especially if it's your first time or you're a novice at drawing or whatever, I always like to. So here's our subject, right? We've got Miguel right here. First thing I always look at, and then in a little bit, folks, in a little bit, I'm going to start going through the comments saying hello to some of you. But first, we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. So hope you guys are ready to go. Okay? I got a couple of pencils here. I always have a spare in case one breaks. So let's take a look at Miguel. So Miguel, we look at overall shapes first. We don't look at all the little tiny details. If we start looking at all the details, it can become a little bit overwhelming. So we look at all the big shapes first. He has a big kind of a kind of a round head, but it is a little bit longer than it is wide, okay? So something to notice. A little bit longer than it is wide. Then, of course, he's got the hoodie around, and then the you know, sweater, of course. He's got his guitar. He's got these big, large eyes, round, brown eyes, and then the shapes around the face, like, the, you know, the, the makeup. Uh, you got those shapes in there. So we're going to start with his face. Okay, we're going to start with his face. One thing you want to do when you start, you want to make sure that where you start the head, top and bottom, you're going to leave enough, enough space underneath for the rest of his body and then above it for the hoodie, right? So you don't want to go too high up and then you don't want to go too low. So somewhere, depending on what you're using to, to draw on, you want to, his face is almost in the center, not quite. The center of my canvas is about right here, right below his, mo his nose or right above his mouth, approximately but I've got an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So here we go, top of his head. Okay, top of his head is about right here. It's nice and curved. 
I'm going to draw really lightly at the beginning and then I start to darken things up. Once I've got the shape that I want, the size of stuff that I want, then I go ahead and start darkening the, the pencil lines so you guys can see them. So this here is the top of Miguel's head. Okay, right above where his little hairline is right here, where his hair is, that's about where that is. Now once again, his head is a little longer than it is wide. So from the side, from my left, I'm going to drop down. The line gets almost straight. This is the side of his head. Okay, and we don't want to go too low. Again, folks, make sure you guys are doing light pencil marks so you can, so you can erase. Okay, you don't want to make really dark lines. And then when you have to go back and erase, it's harder to erase dark lines. So, so line comes down a little bit. Over on this side, we're going to move that head over a little bit to the right. A little bit, not too much. And we come down. Okay, and then this side of his face rounds over a little bit. It's almost like his face is a little bit of an oval. Okay, a little bit of a... A little bit ovalish, just a tiny bit. Okay, then down here, his chin is rounded. Come up. Okay, I take a little step back. I'm going to look at what I've got. If I need to, I make adjustments by erasing, or adding other lines, etc. If I if I like the shape that I've got, I'm going to go ahead and darken things up. So here we go. Here's where you guys get to get a better view of what I've got on the canvas. Long on the left, curves down into the chin, tucks under, comes up, curves back up, and then into the top of the head. Okay? So again, his face is just a little bit longer than it is wide. So if I was to do this with my fingers, here's the white part of his face, and I go like this, I need to make sure that it's a, he's a, his head is a little bit longer than it is wide. Okay? Just a bit. All right. As you guys work on that, I'm going to start saying hello to some of you in the comments. Once again, do not click on any crazy links that are trying to take you um, somewhere else. What's up, Maggie Gutierrez Hoyer, drawing from Michigan. Hello, welcome. Uh, Gladys Michelle D. Rods from, or D. D. Rodriguez, I think it is, from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, how's it going? How are you, everyone? Yeah, I'm going to drop down. There's, look like stuff. There's a bunch of new comments below. Carmen Melinda is also from Puerto Rico. How are you? Amy Crisp Luckett, six-year-old Emmy, is trying to paint tonight. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, guys, so you guys notice I have all these little extra lines around the face, all the ones that, I, that I'm not going to be needing later. I'm not going to touch those right now. All I really care about is the dark line that I created around his actual face, right? All those other lines are kind of extra lines that I was doing when I was just kind of lightly going around his head. Cool. So we've got his head in place. We're going to do his little neck down here, the little part of the bone, right? Here underneath. All you need is a little couple, a couple little lines that come down. Whoops, I probably went a little over to the side too much. We want this kind of in the center. Again, light pencil marks so you can erase. So right here about the middle part of his head, we're just going to pop down a little bit. Okay, not a lot. And curve that up. Okay, this guy right here, this little piece, is that part of his neck right in there a little bone underneath his chin right on, on his neck part okay so what's going on sandra from chicago how are you neo trinity hello rose marie alonzo hello again if you guys can't complete everything with me here during this live session keep in mind the video will be available afterwards okay you'll be able to go back and watch the pre-recorded version of this Every once in a while, take a little step back from your drawing so you can kind of get a, uh, a more complete perspective. If you're too close to the drawing, it's often difficult to see all the little, all the little um, things or the shapes, the overall dimensions of, of stuff. If you're a little too close, take a little step back, look at it from a slight distance just to make sure that everything's correct. All right, here we go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is this right below here. We're going to create this little piece, this little white piece down in here. And it's nothing fancy, just give me a little bit of a, of a space between this line here, which is the bottom of this part. Give me a little line that's curved as well. On my canvas, it's about maybe a quarter of an inch between the two, uh, two parts. And this guy comes down like this. And then I just kind of taper it down into a point. Okay, again, this part, that is that little part right there. Nothing fancy. 
Like I said, we break it down little by little. What's up, Wonder? How are you? Woosa, Wonder. While you guys are working on that, I'm taking a little drink. want to toast to all of you guys hanging out with me today. Thank you so much for being here. Let's have some fun. Cheers. Salud. Okay. So we've got uh, Miguel's shape of his head. So again, this part right here is the inside, right around the white part of his head. And I can already tell this one on this new drawing is a little bit larger than on the original and the shape isn't quite exactly the same. Don't stress about trying to create something exactly like what I've got over here, okay? Um, the main goal is to have some fun, right? And then just kind of pay attention, follow along and do your best. Next thing we're going to do is this. We're going to do this, actually no, we're gonna do the outside part of Miguel's hoodie, the hood on his sweater. Okay, so starting right here at the top, little, little corner, this guy right here. Not quite the center of his head, slightly right of center. Lightly come over, again, light pencil marks, right? Everything's light at the beginning and then we darken things up. So we have a little point right in here, okay? This is this. From right here, the side of his head, you don't want it to come too close to his face now. Make sure you have a little bit of distance. This is the outside of his hoodie. You're gonna drop down. Okay, like this. Go past the side of his, right side of his face a little bit. And then you're gonna curve it inwards towards his neck. Okay. I take a little step back, I look at it, decide that that's what I like, and now I can go ahead and darken it up so you guys have a better view of what I've got. Okay, and then over here as well. So here we go, top of his hoodie, drops down, comes down like this, right in here. This part is this right here. So what we've created is this outside part of Miguel's hoodie. Okay, so again guys, any, any um, links that you guys see in those comments promising to take you somewhere else, do not touch those. Do not look at, do not even, don't even look at them. They're scammers trying to, uh, trying to lead you guys somewhere else. And we don't want that. We want to keep you guys here. Okay. All right. Sorry, I'm a little distracted by trying to delete some of these comments. What's up, Teresa Hamill? Okay, guys, now, other side of the hoodie, right here. This part right in here. Okay, notice, comes down to right about where his cheek is, about right here, and then it starts to curve in back towards the neck. So we're about to draw this line right here. Again, it stops about right where the cheek is, about right here. Okay, if you were to draw a line across, and then it starts to curve in. But it does from here, it does angle out a little bit, out, away from his face. Okay, and then again, when it gets to about this point here, it starts to angle back. Okay, so again, take a little step back. I look at what I got, and I think I noticed I need to make this a little bit wider, just a little bit. So in other words, I have to come out a little further. There we go, like that a little bit better. Do not worry about having to erase. Erasing is part of the process. Nothing wrong with having to erase. You look at it, if you like it, you leave it. If you look at it and you don't like it, you wanna make an adjustment, erase it, do it over again. Okay, from right here, this little point, that's this right here, okay? That and that, this little guy curves in back towards the neck, okay? And then let's go ahead and bring this one in close to his little neck bone. All right, I'm gonna give you guys about a minute and a half or so to get all of that in place while I go through those comments, see who we got here with us. Yeah, no worries, Ariel. It's okay. So, guys, I'm talking to Ariel. Ariel's uh, helping. She's painting with us today, but she's also acting as a as a page admin. She's able to go through and delete some of the comments from these scammers. Yeah, no worries. Simply ban them, Ariel. If you can just ban them from the page, um, I can go through and do the rest later. But 
for now and just ban the, ban them, get them out of here. When you, you know, when you click on those little dots, get get them the heck out of here. Actually, what you can do is you can hide the post, hide the post first, and then delete them. You might have to unhide before you delete, but I'm not totally sure. Just do what you can. I can see some of the links on my end, and when I click on them, I think you've already deleted them, so I can't, um, I click on them to try to do something with the comment, I can't do it. I think because, probably because you've already done something with it, but, it's, but I do still see it. So if you get a chance, when you go back to those comments, simply unhide, unhide the comment, and then delete, and then, then delete it. All right. Joining, Andrea Morales, Morales Ruiz says, joining from Monterey, California, group of seven. Fantastic, Andrea, welcome to you guys. Okay, so back to Miguel. Now what we're going to do is we're going, we're going to do the inside of the hoodie. Okay, the inside line that goes around the head. A couple things to keep in mind before we go there. Make sure that some parts around the head, you leave a little space in between the face and the actual edge of the hoodie, like right here, where all this black area is right here, all the way around the face. We need that. That black area is going to be framing his face a little. So we're going to start right here at the top. Okay, so right in here, this line is the top of that. From there, we kind of come over and it can get close to his head. Doesn't quite touch the head. Comes around, gets really close to the edge of his face. Drops back down. Comes over and then here, it's gonna go down. And actually, 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 let me back it up a little bit. This line right here needs to come down and Go right there underneath where this bone is here. Okay, that part right there. This line comes in, connects right there. Now on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. So actually, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit right there. Go ahead and take care of that. Samata Powdell says, I'm having very, uh, very much fun on my second day. Awesome. Araceli Pimentel, hi. I'm excited, she says. How's it going? Again, guys, just want to remind you guys, any of those links that you see in the comments telling you that the live stream is somewhere else, simply leave them alone. Do not click on that stuff. We don't know what they do. Uh, all I know is that it's scammers trying to take you guys uh, to some other website. All of my live streams happen right here on Facebook. Yeah, right here on this page. So no need to go anywhere else. Um, all right. While you guys are working on this little line right here, I'm about to start a little bit of Get some music going in the background. It's got to be, um, for those of you that are new to the, chat, to the page, it has to be Facebook approved music. Otherwise, they'll ban the, they'll stop my feed. It has to be uh, copyright friendly to Facebook standards. So they got a collection of music that, that we um, have to use. All right, so give me give me about a minute here to get this going, and then I'll get right back to where we left off. The tough part is coming up, right? We're going to be doing um, we're going to be doing the we're going to do all genres. Why not? We're going to be doing the face features in a little bit, and that's where things get that's where things get tricky. So, all right, all right, all right. Let me see. Delete and. Okay, here we go. Now over to the other side of his face, side of the hoodie. Okay, so now we're gonna come across and create this other line over here. Same thing, it's gonna connect to right in here. Okay, right up underneath this bone here. So we come over, drop down, comes down, all the way over and does this. So I have a little space in between the side of his face and then the, the sweater itself, the hoodie. Okay, something like that. Okay, so let me go right back. Guys, don't be afraid to ask questions, right? If you guys have questions, comments, etc., putting put them in the uh, comment section. Um, if you guys are painting with friends and maybe you guys are in different places, right? 
You guys see each other on the, in the comment sections? Feel free to say hello. What's up, Yesenia Quintero from Elko, Nevada. Audrey Bowling from Van Buren, Arkansas. How's it going, Audrey? How are you guys? Thank you guys all once again. Pat Clausen from Kokomo, Indiana. What's up, Kokomo? Thank you, thank you. Jimmy Lynn Morris, my pleasure. L. Roberts from Fresno, California. All right, everyone. So here's what, here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna do the sweater. We're gonna finish off, off with the sweater. The sweater's pretty basic. The shoulders, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of a skinny little, little guy. Um, so you don't wanna make these too wide. You just kind of come down on each side, do a little line, comes down at an angle, and then simply take that all the way to the bottom edge of the canvas. Do the same thing on both sides, okay? Out and then down. Last thing you're gonna do to, actually two things you're gonna do to the sweater. You're gonna take this little line right here from the middle, take one of these lines and just bring it straight down. So right here where the, at the bottom of the uh, little V taper, where that bone is or where the hoodie comes down, whoops, take your line and come straight down. Once you've done that, you wanna give Miguel some arms. You got these, has these little black lines down in here, real subtle, you probably may not have noticed them, those are his arms. Just like that, okay? We're about to get to the hard stuff. Promise it's not that hard. Just pay attention to what I do and you guys are going to be okay. guys all right here we go so let's take a look at Miguel's face the hardest part of the whole piece of course we got his mouth got his little nose right in there and then we got his eyes and the makeup around the eyes and of course we got the hair we're gonna take this one step at a time if you guys look at Miguel's face the nose lands about halfway from top to bottom okay Make sure you guys are looking, when you guys are looking at this, make sure you guys are looking at the, the line for the, the lines for the face, right? Not the hoodie, not anything else, but the lines for his face. Well, if you were to break that down, that little nose sits at about the middle point of his face, vertically. So if you were to come down to the middle part of his nose, which is about right here, for his face, that's where we're going to make that nose, okay? And don't worry too much, you don't have to measure or anything like that. Simply gauge it, look at, eyeball it, and go, okay, so his nose is going to sit about right here and his little nose looks almost like a like an upside down V somewhat looks kind of like this I'm gonna bring the uh, canvas close to the camera here in just a moment okay it looks like that sorry I'm trying to keep it from moving so much but his little nose looks something like that you don't have to have a perfect nose at the moment we're gonna refine it with when we do the paint, but for now, that's what you wanna look at. You want something like that, okay? And again, that's about halfway from top to bottom. Keep your pencils light, pencil marks light, so that way when you, when you have to erase, you don't uh, have a whole lot, lot of pencil marks all over the place. Because we're gonna, especially around the face, because we're gonna be painting over everything in white, you, will, you can sometimes see some of those pencil lines come through on white, okay, depending on the color that you're using, or the type of paint that you're using, I should say. So, so I think somebody asked in the comments, because I see Ariel answering, oh, Martha. Yeah, so the video will be available afterwards as a recorded version of the live, okay? So, and it will be up for at least a couple of weeks. Eventually, I'm gonna start taking a lot of these videos and removing them, uh, maybe putting them all up on YouTube. I'm not sure yet, but this video the live session of this will be available after the live is over okay so we got the nose in place let's look at that mouth okay so he's his mouth if you were to draw a line across the middle of the mouth again that's almost the middle between the bottom of his nose and the bottom of his chin so here where this where his chin would be and the nose 
the, the mouth, this part right here is almost in the middle. It's slightly higher than the middle. So what you're going to do is this. Look at the line for his chin right here and the nose and find where about the middle is and move up just a little bit. So up a little bit from the middle between the bottom of his nose and the line for his chin. For me, that middle is about right here. I move up just a touch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a nice light line like this. Okay. I'm going to erase that line. I'm not going to need it, so I'm not going to go very dark on that. It's just a little placeholder to let me know where that mouth, about the middle of the mouth, is going to be. Okay, so, so give me a nice little light line like that. Make sure you don't make it dark. That line eventually is going to go away. So once you've got this, you're going to create your top, the top of his lip or the top line of his mouth. And that curves up. Right, so I can draw I can draw the top part of it and then I can curve it down on the sides, tapers down to the corners of his mouth. Okay, like that. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a couple minutes on that. Marisol Rodriguez Olmeda from Puerto Rico. Lots of people from Puerto Rico today. Pretty awesome. Love it. Welcome to all of you guys. Catalina Island, what's up? Constance Garcia. Happy to have all you guys hanging out today. Hope you're all having a good time. I know I always do whenever I do these. If any of you guys are, are new to the page, please let me know in the comments. Say, hey, first time here. Say hello. Okay, all of you guys that are returning, there's a whole bunch of you guys. I, you know, I see your names in the comments. Welcome back and thank you for being here. Bottom of the mouth, here we go. Bottom of the mouth, mouth is, drops down, it's a little bit uh, steeper. The angle down is a little steeper than the angle for the mouth. The angle for, for the top of the mouth has a little bit less of a, of a sharp angle. The bottom of the mouth drops down a little bit steeper, the lines do, the, the edges. Kind of like this. And then they curve up. All right, he's got a really expressive uh, uh, look on his face. Wide open mouth. Don't forget, if you have to erase, don't be afraid to erase. No big deal. Okay, I'm going to turn this towards me a little tiny bit so I get a better view. And then if you need to erase, go ahead and erase. Like I'm looking at the overall shape of the mouth and I'm just going to bring down the top, this top line down a little bit. Do not be afraid to erase. Yeah, there we go. That's a little better. What's up, Wendy Ramirez from Downey, California. Yvette from Rancho Palos Verdes. Bunch of people from California, which is where I am. Awesome, hello to all you guys. Ashley Davis says, love doing the Nightmare Before Christmas with you. We had a paint party and painted along with some friends. Awesome, Ashley. Fantastic. Hope you're here for next week when we do uh, Jack and Sally. I'm going to show you guys real quick, for those of you that might have not been here at the beginning. For those of you that are joining in tomorrow for the uh, Day of the Dead themed event, I don't have the painting here at the studio. It's, I actually have it at home, so I apologize. But if you guys are interested, and don't know what that's about, simply look at the events. Um, the event's coming up on my page, and you'll see it. It's tomorrow. I believe I set it for 4 or 5 o'clock, maybe even 6, and I apologize for not remembering. But take a look at the event. You'll, you'll see it. But next week, next Thursday, we got this cool Hocus Pocus themed piece. Okay? Um, I'm going to teach you guys how to draw these out. But for those of you that want to use a stencil, you're, you're going to want to email me the wigs, the heads, right, the hair. You're going to want to email me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. I'm going to start sending out those stencils tomorrow. Again, this painting is next Thursday. I'll be sending out stencils for the hair and for the little cauldron down, down here. Now, the, the writing, I'll show you guys how to do that. But that stuff, you know, you're going to want to practice on the writing um, beforehand. And then on Friday, we're doing this next Friday. Next week, Jack and Sally, 
Okay, for those of you that are uh, night, Nightmare Before Christmas fans, and maybe those of you that joined me last week for, was it two weeks ago now? I can't remember. All kinds of cool events on this page, so can't keep up with everything. But that's next Friday, okay? Check out the information on the page for that. All right, back to Miguel. Sorry about all the segues, folks, but, you know, got to let, let everyone know what's happening. So we got the mouth in place. What we're going to do now is little teeth. He's got these teeth across. What I can do now is I can go ahead and erase. I'm going to go in and erase this line that I did here at the beginning. I'm going to take that out of there. We don't need it anymore. What we are going to do is create this, his teeth on top, his teeth line. And the teeth are closer to the top lip than they are to the bottom. So all I'm going to do is this. Okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and give them some lines to indicate the separations for those teeth. So this one's a little bit on the tougher side of some of the stuff that we draw. There's a lot more detail to them, but, but you guys got this. You guys got this. One last thing that we're going to do for the lips is we're going to give him Actually, you know what? We're not going to worry about the lips anymore for now. We're good. We're going to move on to the eyes. Okay, you got the big old brown eyes. Um, we're going to start with the outside shape first. Okay, the outside shape of the makeup. And then from there, we'll start creating what's on the inside. So I want you guys to look at this first. This line right there. Okay, the, on the right, left side of his face, but right side of the painting. So that line is you look at his nose and you move over to the right just a little bit that line is right there okay again this line is that right there okay so what you're gonna do from here you're gonna angle that line back now and underneath what's eventually going to be his eye curves back a bit and then it curves up and around towards the top where his hair is going to be now, you do want to get close to the top of that head, right? You want to come up, kind of do that. So we've got this front part of that, goes underneath back towards the right side of his head or left side of his head, right side of the painting, comes up and around, and we're right here. This is right here. From there, you're gonna come forward a bit. slightly, slightly past this line right here, or actually maybe right above from each other. Not, nothing too crazy, oh, and then we're gonna connect the two, okay? Work on that for a moment, and we're gonna, we're gonna start on the other. Again, right now we're doing the outside, outside of that, where the dark makeup lines are on his face. Those of you that might be Day of the Dead fans, that event for tomorrow evening is going to be pretty awesome. Okay, take a look at that. That's going to be a really fun one. That one also has a stencil, though. I, I, I have a Sugar Skull stencil available for that. So cut off to request that is today, 10 p.m. West Coast time. So make sure you guys, if you guys are planning on doing that and haven't requested it yet, please email me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. That's Jesse, J-E-S-S-E. -S -S -E. All right, here we go, other side, over here. This little line right here is what's next. That's slightly, actually I'd probably bring that a little too close and let me, whoops, that eraser is kind of shot. You need to uh, space that out just a little bit. So from the corner of his nose over here, so simply come on over. Make your little line here. That line is this one. From there, you're gonna drop down towards the left, left side of the canvas. Then you're gonna curve up. Okay, so we have this side underneath and then this part right in there. From there, you wanna come up a little bit. 
then from there you're going to go up, angled up towards the top of his head once again, curve it just a little bit. This little area of his makeup is going to be covered up with hair so you're not going to see much of it. And then you're going to bring this down like that. All right, we're getting there. We are getting there. <laughs> Some of you guys might be going, oh, why did I, is this what I planned on doing today? I know, I'm hoping you guys are having fun. Drawing can be a little tricky, I know, but have fun with it, folks. Relax. You can always come back and do this again, right? Tomorrow, the next day, whatever the case may be. And you guys notice this part of his makeup on his head is, it looks deformed a little bit right now. It's higher than this side, but I'm not worried about it. Uh, ideally, if we were going to see that part of his head, I would fix this. I would bring this down a little bit to match more of the other side. But this part right here is going to have hair over it. And you're not going to see it. So I'm not, uh, I'm not too worried about it. Okay, and I'm, I'm talking about this corner up in here. Once you've got these two <clears throat> uh, outside areas of the eyes in place, you want to go ahead and add a little bit of hair. From right here, we have some hair that comes down. Kind of does this, comes over, almost connects over to the other eye, and then it comes back, uh, back up. So here, here, and I'm going to erase this upper corner so you guys don't get confused here. So this little piece of hair here is this. And then you can do the same thing, add some more hair. This com comes over the top of Miguel's eye, comes back. And then you can have a little more hair like that. So what I did here is I added a line that comes across over the top of the left eye, comes back up, goes back out towards the side of his head. How's it going, Veronica? Veronica Prado, how are you? Yeah, little by little, folks, little by little, okay? All right. So we got one last bit of hair, and that's the little hair over here on the left uh, side of the canvas up here on the top of his head. All you're going to do is have a little bit of hair that comes down like that. Now let's work on the inside of the eyes, the inside shapes for the eyes. Okay, what I want you guys to do, we're going to do the actual circle, the actual uh, eyeball part of his, the, the brown part of his eyes is what we're going to do next. Okay, what I want you guys to do is notice two things. The eyeballs are really wide. You guys, was, you know, his eyes are wide open, super expressive, like, whoa, like, what's happening, right? Super happy, big round eyeballs, and his pupils are really large. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to give me a good size circle on the inside, but you don't want to go all, all the way over to the edge. You want to make sure that your circle doesn't come and touch the edges of the black parts that we just added. You want to do the same thing to both sides. Big old circle, but you want there to be plenty of space between your outline for the circle and the edge of the makeup, okay? Plenty of space. This is the brown part of Miguel's eye. We're not worried about the pupil right now. Okay, once you've got these big old circles in place, you're going to do the, his actual, the white parts of his eyes. That's what these are right here. They're the white outlines to the outside of his eyes. And we're going to start with the left eye. We're going to do a little line across right in there. We're almost there, folks. We're almost there. Don't anybody give up on me because we got this. We got this. So underneath the... His right eye, you can do a little line that comes across. Then it's going to go back up like this. Angles up. So this right here is this right here. Now you want to come across over 
the top of McGill's eye. Like that. Curve it down. And then straight line back down towards the bottom. Like that. Everybody take a nice deep breath. We are almost there. Almost there. Okay, I'm going to give you guys about a minute to get all of this in place. And then we, we go over to the right eye. Good, Araceli. Awesome. I hope everybody's having a fun time. Even if you guys are struggling a little bit, don't worry about it. Just try to relax through it, okay? Just remember that the more you practice, the better you become. There's no way around it. Okay, let's look, at, let's look at the left eye. We're going to start at the bottom once again. We draw a little line that goes back like this. Okay, and then we're going to curve it up. Remember, leave some space. You want some space. Actually, you don't, you don't have to worry too much about the space. We can always modify that with the black paint. Comes up over the top of the eye. Curves up and over. Then it drops down and forward. And this part right here is this part right here. Then you're going to drop it down and forward and then back under Miguel's eye. Back through the comments a little bit. Okay, now the only thing left on those eyes is the big old pupils, the big black areas in the inside of his eyes, big circles. But you want to leave enough space for the brown, right? For the brown edges. So big, wide pupils, wide open pupils. We can even darken them up a little bit so it's easier to tell what they are. We got one last thing to do on the face. One last thing. So, I'm gonna give you guys about a minute to catch up with everything on the face. Take a look, make sure you've got everything. And then in a moment, we're gonna do a little makeup, these little circles underneath his eyes. We're not gonna do these lines around his face just yet. We're gonna wait till we have some paint on the face before we do any of these little black markings around his, around his lips, right? The teeth, those are the teeth, the skull teeth. So, 30 seconds. For any of you out there watching that are interested in helping support the page, I greatly appreciate all the um, all the tips that I've received from um, quite a few of the followers, pretty amazing. But any of you that might be interested, I do have a virtual tip jar. The information is included at the top of the description of the video. But I do have a Venmo. Okay, I have, that's the Venmo information right there. There's also PayPal and then Zelle. Okay, the PayPal, it's really important if you guys, any of you do happen to send any money over through PayPal. It's one word, painting with Jesse. You can also look for it under the, uh, the Gmail, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. If you guys separate these words, it goes to somebody else, okay? So again, any of you that might be interested in um, helping support the page a little bit, it'd be greatly appreciated. There's the information right there. All right, everyone. 
little circles under the eyes. A couple things I want to point out. They're smaller towards the inside of his face. Near the nose, they're a little smaller and they get gradually larger as they go out towards the outside. So I'm going to start here on the inside. Little, they're almost like little elongated circles. Not, they're not super round. They look almost like sideways ovals. Miguel has four on each side. You guys can have five, six. I'm sticking with four. What I do to one side, I do to the other. One, two, three, and four. Okay. And I'm going to take a little step back and look at Miguel, make sure that I'm not missing anything. We Looks like I've got everything. Sometimes I like to forget, you know, as I'm going along, I'll forget some things, but looks like I've got everything. Other than his guitar, which is going to be coming up um, in a little bit. Other than the guitar, I got everything on that face. All right, everyone. Let's look at the guitar. Okay, we're gonna do the guitar here in about 30 seconds. Okay, with that guitar, what you wanna do is, depending on how much space you've got on the side of Miguel, and it could be, it could be on the left side or right side, uh, but up to you guys. So you're gonna to wanna to start with the head part of the guitar. You got the neck, right? And then you got the, uh, I'm not even sure what the technical term for this anymore is anymore. But this piece here is the large part. We're gonna start with that. You don't wanna start with the neck come out and then realize you don't have a, enough for this piece here. So you want to start with that first. What we've got, this top part is rounded. So find your little spot where that's going to be. Give me a nice little round line like that. Okay. From there, you're going to come down. Angled lines, angled but straight like that. Then you're going to bring those inwards towards the, <clears throat> you're going to narrow those in. Okay, work them out for a moment. A lot of fun stuff coming up on this on this page, folks. So make sure you guys are make sure you guys have liked the page, so you guys can get the notifications in your feed. Right, every time I post a new event, uh, it'll it'll let you guys know. So make sure you guys like the page. Very important if you guys want to see all the fun future stuff that we got going on. Got a lot of stuff for kids during the week, and then the weekends are usually for more more of an older uh, age group. But kids can join those two. It just depends, right? They're, more, they're a little more complex. Take a little more time. But all right, neck. Here we go. The neck of the guitar. And as you guys can see, on this one here, I got less of the guitar visible than on this one. That's simply because I didn't leave enough space here on the sides. This Miguel's a little bit wider than that one, but no big deal. Okay, nothing crazy about that. When you're all done with the guitar, the outside shape of the guitar, you want to give put the little openings on the inside here. They look like the eyes on a skull, right? So you want to include those. And you are good to go. Before we start painting, which is the next step, you want to take a look at Miguel. If there's any adjustments you want to make, you do them now. You know, maybe one thing that I would do is I would make parts of the hoodie a little bit more narrow, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. Just you know, this is the time that you look at it, make sure you've got everything, make any adjustments. We're going to start painting in about two minutes, okay? So again, for those of you that are going to be painting along, uh, maybe you're using markers, colored pencils, watercolors, whatever. These are the colors that I'm getting, the basic colors that I'm using. Got red for the hoodie, got this really dark blue for the background that I'm, I'm actually going to overlay with a little bit of pink. I got some brown for Miguel's eyes, some white for the face, but those are just kind of general col uh, colors that I'm going to be using. If you got 
other colors that you want to use, it's up to you. Okay, so so let's get ready for that. Anytime I paint, I always have paper towels with me because things can get pretty messy. So I always have paper towels handy. Okay, so let's get some of those. Any of you that are new to, uh, to painting, maybe you want to know about brushes. The brush sets that I use, these are usually, for, especially for my more simpler paintings like these, I use, now I've got a bunch of blue in my water from an earlier painting that I was working on, no big deal. But the brushes that I'm using, basic synthetic bristle brushes, this is a one inch flat brush, okay, this one here. I got a half an inch flat brush. I got a quarter inch flat brush. And then this little tiny liner brush that I use for the detail. If you got anything similar to this, you're in good shape. They don't have to be exact. There's all kinds of different types of brushes out there. It's all you really need. For a, a decent basic brush set, for those of you that are interested, you're looking at about 10, uh, more like eight to 12 bucks, depending on where you get them. But Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Amazon, those are all good places to get these. I like to keep in between, um, so as I'm painting, in between steps, I like to keep my, my brushes sitting in water in a solo cup. Okay, this keeps them from drying out because we're working with acrylic paint and acrylic paint dries very quickly. I like to, uh, I like to keep them floating around in the water. So, all right, folks, here we go. Who's ready to paint or, or color or whatever it is that you guys are using? You guys good to go? I know I am. So here we go. Here's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take my uh, half inch brush. I'm going to take some red and I'm going to outline the hoodie inside and outside of the hoodie. Once I've outlined it, it makes it a lot easier to fill in the rest. But I do want to outline the inside here. So acrylic paint often lays, lays down transparent, meaning you can see the canvas coming through or if there's other colors or pencil lines, they'll come, they come through the paint, especially on the first layer. So what we do here is we actually work, we work the paint in, in layers. So this is our first layer. So I've gone through and outlined everything, then I just go ahead and fill the rest in. And again, this layer is going to look a little transparent and get, takes on a little bit of a pink feel to it. It looks a lot more, a lot brighter than on the original, but it's the same paint that I'm using. What happens is later, once this layer has dried, I'll come in and um, apply another layer. Sometimes it takes three layers, sometimes four, it just depends what intensity, the intensity that you're looking for. The more layers you, you apply, the more uniform the color becomes, and the more intense the color becomes. We are going to be doing a little outlining towards the end in black, so you want to make sure you're able to see some of those pencil lines coming through, um, like on the edges, right? You want it so you know where your edges are. So like in here, we have a little bit of some outlining in here, where his little arms are on the inside, so just a bit. So make sure you don't cover up like where the arm lines are, here and here. You don't want to, you want to be able to see them. Here at the, um, the lower part of the sweater, I'm just, I'm using long, vertical brush strokes. It elongates his body a little bit. If I, if I used side to side brush strokes, it actually shortens him up a little bit. Even though it's a, it's a visual trick, right? The distance is still the same. The long brush strokes give him a little bit of, a, of an elongated feel. 
So that's what we're going for. Okay, so color in that sweater. Don't worry, if, it, if you're new to acrylic paints, don't worry too much about making this super dark or uniform at the moment. It's not gonna work out that way. You have to do it in layers like I mentioned earlier. So simply get some paint on every part of the inside of a sweater and then we're moving on to the next step. All right. Yep, that's right. That's right, Pamij. Thank you. Joanne's also sells paint and paintbrushes. They actually have a really good selection. Walmart, Walmart surprisingly, uh, after COVID hit, I noticed that their art selection really blew up. And they've actually got some really good prices on brushes, good uh, prices on canvases and uh, paints. So if you've got a Walmart nearby, check those out. Again, for any of you that are interested in painting, maybe today you're just you're coloring with markers or something else, but you're interested in trying out painting, um, I definitely recommend Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Amazon, Joann's is a good one, and um, Walmart. Like I said, at least locally, and I've been to a few Walmarts around here within like a two, two hour radius. Depending on where I am, sometimes I'll just swing by a Walmart to look at art supplies and they all, so far, they've all had some really good selections, so. All right, guys, you guys got about 30 seconds to finish up on that sweater. Again, don't worry about it being perfectly uniform or, or super intense. Just give me a, a nice layer of paint, first layer of paint, and we're good to go. We're gonna work in some of the black around the edges of his face, okay? So that's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna be switching to a smaller brush than this half-inch one that I'm using at the moment. So you guys got about 30 seconds and we're moving on. I'm going to be using my little quarter inch brush. Okay, everyone, little brush, a little quarter inch brush. I'm just gonna grab some black, dip it right into that paint. What I'll do is I'll, um, I will take the skinny part of the, skinny part of the brush, right? I'm not painting with the broad part. And I'll do the same thing, I'll try to outline Outline first and then fill in. By outlining, it keeps me from, it helps keep me from going over the borders. So let's say, for example, I'm trying to avoid getting some of this paint in the face or on the little, where the little bones are in his neck. It makes it easier if I outline first. I don't have to outline. I can go through and just start applying paint everywhere, but this is a more careful way of doing it and one that I recommend, especially if you're newer. Once you have some experience and better uh, brush control, outlining isn't as important. But this especially helps, you know, if uh, when you start moving quickly, it's easy to go over. And for example, I could easily add some of this black into the face, face by accident. So again, outline, and then I fill it in. So Ariel just let me know on Messenger that my Day of the Dead painting tomorrow is at four, and I believe that's four Pacific. Okay, four Pacific. So if you guys are in another part of the country or another part of the world, make sure you guys look at your time zone. When you guys click on the event, if you, if you indicate that you're going to the event, it'll tell you, it'll change the time zone to wherever you are. Okay, so once you click on the event, if you indicate that you're going or that you're interested, it'll tell you um, what the time zone is in your area, what, what the start time is in your area. Okay, so that's an easy way to, to, to know. 
I got somebody um, messaged me last time, hey, what's the time zone of your event in India? And I was like, ooh, I have no idea. <laughs> but then I think I, I told her to go and uh, check, check what I just mentioned, and, and it worked out for her. So again, we just kind of outline his face like this. Okay, once I've done this, I can also go in here and outline the dark part around his eyes. Okay, like that. Same thing to the other side. So this painting part of it's going to go pretty quickly. It was the drawing part that you know is going to take some time. And then again, everyone, if you happen to have to have to leave in between because you don't finish, don't worry about it. And let's say something comes up and you got to take off. I mean, I'd love for you guys to be here to the end with me, and it makes it a lot more fun. But if you guys have to take off. The video is going to be available, so you can always come back and start it wherever you left off. There we go. All right. Hey, Jacob's in the house. What's going on, Jacob? And Neo Trinity says, my daughter and I are painting from La Habra, California. And I was, I'm going back in the comments, folks. So I know some of you guys put your comments in quite a long time ago, but I go through them as I can. Hopefully not missing saying hello to anyone of you. Carmen Melendez from Puerto Rico. I think I might have said hello to you already. Ruby Maldonado from Bakersfield says, love this. Fantastic. Ashley Davis from Ontario, Canada. I'm repeating some of your hellos. I apologize. But uh, like I said, just go through those comments. Don't be shy, though, folks. But don't be shy. Say hello. If you guys haven't said hi yet, please say hello. All right. So 30 seconds, folks, and we're going to move on here. I'm switching brushes. I'm going to take a little, uh, my real tiny, skinny brush for this next step. Okay, so if you guys have one of these, something similar to this. That's what we're going to be using. Whenever I start, if I'm using a paint in small areas like I'm about to, I like to mix a little bit of water with the paint. It makes it easier to work with. So I'll take my brush. It was, of course, it was already in the, in the water cup, so I don't have to dip it too many times or whatever, but it's got water in it. I just bring over a little bit of water, and I mix it into a little bit of the bla uh, black paint. So I have a little bit of black paint over to the side, Dip my brush into the water a couple times, bring that water over, mix it into the paint, it makes it easier to work with. Here we go. We're trying to do as much of the black areas as possible. Okay, so what I'm going to do is also do the big large part of the pupils, the inside of his eyes. I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, do the same thing, right? We do to one side, we do to the other. when it, uh, we're talking about eyes here, right? For the most part, eyes tend to be symmetrical, so. Okay. And of course, we're going to do his nose. Again, everyone, the idea isn't to necessarily create an exact copy of what I'm doing. 
create your own version of this. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, and then we're going to do the little, little decorations under his eye, each eye, the little circles. Now notice what I do. I'm working with an easel, got a canvas to stabilize my hand a bit. I take my non-painting hand, put it on my table, take my painting hand and lay that over the top of my wrist and that stabilizes my hand pretty well. One little trick right there. Sometimes our hands shake, especially if we've had coffee or too much coffee and this will help stabilize things. And there we go, getting there. I'm gonna give you guys about a minute on that. <clears throat> then we're moving on. All right, <clears throat> same little brush. What I want to do now is, you guys see this little tiny upside down heart on his guitar? Basically, I'm sure you guys all noticed, the guitar is the shape of a skull, right? So you can take your pencil and draw a little upside down heart first. Okay, a little upside down heart. Probably the easiest way to do that is that. Or you'll, you can take your little tiny liner brush and just go right in there and draw it using that. There we go. Okay, so do that, work on that for a moment. Anytime I move from one step to the other, if you're not quite where I am, try to keep up, do your best, right? But if I move and you guys are kind of um, behind a little bit, move over to the step that I'm on and then you can always go back and add the previous step. Like let's say for example, you're working on the heart and I move over to start, to start doing the lips, which is what I'm about to do. Move with me and then go back to your heart. What I'm going to do with the lips part so the lips, the outline of the lips are kind of a gray color, a little bit. So I'm taking a little bit of black and a little bit, a little bit of white, mixing those two together, making a really dark gray. What I'm going to do after that is outline the lips. And you guys notice the lips are kind of, uh, it's not, they're not pencil line thin. You want to give them a little bit of thickness and you can achieve that by pressing down on your skinny brush a bit. Okay, kind of like that. I'll do the same thing over the top. There we go. You can also take some of this gray, maybe lighten it up a little bit more by adding a little bit more white. So the same color that we just used, you can come up here and add this to the outside of your eyes. So the black part of the eyes on the outer edge of that, add a little bit of that gray so that, so that it's darker as it goes in towards the center. So again, all you're doing is taking some of this gray and outlining the black parts of the eye, of the eye makeup. There we 
you know, something like that. And then, folks, do not forget, please, um, I mentioned earlier, if you guys would, can send me pictures of your stuff, I love to see what people paint. If you guys can send me pictures of your masterpieces at the end, that would be awesome. And especially if you're painting with a group, a group of friends, group of family, send pictures of yourselves in there. I love, I love seeing that, right? I love seeing your stuff. So it would make me pretty happy if you guys sent me pictures of your masterpieces and if you would include yourselves in them, even better. Okay, let me give you guys about a minute there to catch up on all this. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start adding in, actually we're going to add in brown to the hair. We're going to add in that brown to the hair here on top. Okay, and Miguel's starting to really take shape. After we add the, the brown to the hair, we're going to add white to the face, even though it's already white, the canvas is already white, or your paper, whatever it is you're working with, if it's white, you do want to add paint because it does make a difference. After we do that, we're going to work on the background a bit, and then we come in and refine some of the stuff on the inside, and we're pretty much done after, done after that, okay? So, in a moment, like I said, we're going to do the brown in the hair. And I'm going to be using my little quarter-inch brush for that part. Alright, here we go. So I've got a dark brown. I'm adding a little bit of yellow to lighten it up a bit because I want a lighter brown. So once I've got the color that I want, maybe a little bit of red also, a little bit of white, bringing that color up quite a bit. Once I've got the color that I want, I'm going to go ahead and come in here and uh, Add that brown to Miguel's hair. Now this brown's a little bit different than the one I used on the original, it's all right. How's that? I think it's looking fantastic. I'm liking it. And this is the only area that we're using this color brown. We are going to be putting some brown inside where the mouth is, here in the opening of the mouth. So once you've done this to the hair, you're going to take some, maybe some darker brown, or you can mix, you can also mix brown and red. Okay, a little bit of brown. Actually, no, I'm not going to mix any red with mine. I'm just going to take straight brown, come in here, add it to the inside underneath the teeth, but above those lips. Okay, don't forget everyone, if you guys, whoever is joining me on that Day of the Dead painting tomorrow, um, there's a pre-prep video. There's also a pre-prep video that I put up a few days ago. You guys want to make sure you watch that. Uh, so, again, if you're planning on joining me on the Day of the Dead painting tomorrow night. Make sure you watch that pre-prep video. And if you don't have your skull, uh, your sugar skull template yet, email me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com for that. Okay, so there's that. Now, I'm also going to take a little bit of this dark brown. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit of black. A little bit of black, same little skinny brush. And I'm going to come in here and give Miguel's Hair, especially here on the tips, down towards the, towards those tips. I mean, darken up. Give them some uh, some dark lights. Okay, like that. And then 
while I'm at it, since I'm working with brown, what am I going to do? I'm going to color in Miguel's eyes. Now for that, I'm going to use this little tiny liner brush, right, a little skinny thing. From in here. Again, this brown's a little different than the original, but no big deal. There we go. What's good? What's going down, Chantal? You painting today? You guys must be concentrated. That's good. You're, you're concentrating. Again, don't be shy, folks. If you guys have questions about anything, put it down in the comments. If you haven't yet, please say hello. And obviously, as I'm sitting here looking at the two Miguel's that I've got, this, this one here is a little bit larger than that, right? The head's bigger, the overall picture is a little larger. No big deal. Again, everyone's piece ends up looking a little different, so don't want anyone stressing over that. I'm gonna take a moment to take a little bit of black. I'm actually gonna make some adjustments here on the edges. just to kind of match up. Just rounding his face a little bit more. On the new on the new one that I'm making he's a little bit more of an like a long face. Especially around the cheeks and stuff so All right, so you colored in the eyes in brown. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take white. We only want white for this. If it mixes in with a little tiny, tiny bit of black in some areas so that it almost looks like it's a slightly off white, that's okay. It'll still work because it becomes almost like a chalky white instead of a stark white. And I can, I'll leave that part up to you, but for the most part, I'm going to do this with just white. You're not going to be able to, to tell too much of a difference because the canvas is white, right? So, so don't expect to see a whole lot. It's not going to be anything really obvious. But I'm going to be taking my, my smaller brushes. I'm going to start with this large brush. I'm just going to come in here. Now this white paint that I have is pretty chunky. Might have to add a little water to it here to tone it down a bit, but I'll do all the large parts of the face first. And again, safe thing to do is to outline, outline everything. So that's what I recommend. Outline everything first and then come in and um, paint the larger areas with, the big, with this big brush, with a bigger brush. For the smaller sections, like in between the face and between the, the sides of the head and the eyes, I'm switching over to my small brush. I'm just going to come in here. Again, I'm just going through and doing all the white parts of the face. You go down to the neck bones, do a little layer there also. I'm going to do the guitar. If 
if you happen to get a little bit of black or brown mixed into your paint when you're doing this, as long as it's a little bit, it's okay. Because it kind of creates, again, kind of a cool little off-white effect that does work. Then I'm going to take a smaller brush, my little pointy one, and I'm going to do the white part of his eyes and his teeth. <laughs> See, you guys, your comments are funny. Catalina says, my Miguel looks sleepy. And then she says, I mean angry. Maybe he's sleepy angry. Because he like hasn't, he's sleepy angry because he hasn't had any sleep. How about that? What's up, Cindy DeSoto? And then, so here we go. Whites of the eyes. You guys, if you guys have questions about any of this stuff, or maybe like later on when we're all done, you guys have questions about the process or about the paints that I use, etc. Feel free to send me send me um, questions on Messenger. I'm pretty busy, especially with trying to create. So I I do this as a business also, where I actually come out to people's homes and do painting events. Especially with COVID, things have slowed down quite a bit, but. I do a lot of Zoom sessions for private parties. Do a lot of stuff like that. So I'm pretty busy, but I answer all my messages as quickly as I can. But anyway, if you guys have any questions about any of this, feel free to um, you know, to reach out. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Now I'm gonna go through here on the teeth, and I'm gonna cover up my pencil lines that I did for the, you know, the, the lines that separate the teeth. Later on, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of gray and, and redo those. go so again folks if you're not done and you have to go don't stress do what you got to do <clears throat> and um, the video will be available yes, uh, later again I'd rather have you guys stick around and stay to the end but, but I get it as long as you guys you know are enjoying yourselves and all the good stuff That's what's important. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit of that gray that I made earlier for the areas around the eyes. I'm gonna take a little bit of that. And again, with my tiny little brush, I'm just gonna come over and make the little lines for the separations in the teeth. Then I'm going to take just the black and I'm going to come over. I'm going to stretch out the sides of his mouth just a little bit. And then I'm going to make the skull teeth, which is basically what these lines represent. 
right? He's dressed up Day of the Dead style. And you paint these teeth on the outside of the lips. Like I said, folks, we're getting there. We are getting there. The background is pretty easy. We're, we're almost there. We're almost to the background. Okay, guys, here's what I want you to do. Take a look, take a look at your Miguel. Take a little step back. Okay? Make sure that you're not missing anything. Make sure that you got everything, right? The areas around the eyes, make little adjustments if you feel you need to. We're about to start working on that background. And your background can be any color you want, whatever color you'd like. I'm gonna stick with the kind of original colors that I got, the dark blue and the pink. Okay, so I'm gonna cover everything with dark blue and then I'm gonna come in and tone it at the bottom with that pink. So that's what's happening next. 30 seconds to get ready to do some background. And then again, folks, for those of you that would like to help support the channel, I greatly appreciate it. It helps, um, you know, it helps pay mainly the advertising because I pay for advertising on these events. Part of it, I'm growing the channel, right? I'm growing the following to the channel, which is amazing. Everybody's been amazing. Lots of new followers, lots of new likes to the page. But, um, but yeah, I, I pay for the advertisement on Facebook. And um, the tips help out with that. So anyway, there's my Venmo, there's my PayPal, and there's my Zelle. This information's at the top of the video, the description under, uh, you know, the description at the top. Don't go looking for it just yet. If you're interested in tipping, take a look at that later. Okay, then once, once the video's done, you can go back and take a look at that, or once the live session's over. But again, PayPal is one word. PayPal, the easiest way to find me there is uh, using my, my email, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. And Jesse spelled J-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, right? And then uh, Zell, 951-217-2237. I think Venmo has been asking for the last four digits of somebody's phone number if you're looking to send them money. So there's that. All right, everyone. <clears throat> Before we get to the background, I'm just going to remind everyone that next week, Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus next Thursday. Look at the event on my page for the exact times. If you guys want to participate, I will teach you how to draw those heads, but you want, if you don't want to worry about drawing those, I am making some stencils available. You're going to want to email me for those at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. I'll send you stencils for their, the shapes of their heads and then the cauldron here at the bottom. The hocus pocus or whatever words you decide to add, I'll show you guys how to do some of that, but for the most part, you're on your own on that, right? You're going to follow along with me, but that might take a little practice so and then friday the following so that's next thursday and then friday we got jack and sally i'm going to be teaching you guys how to draw this whole thing and then we're going to paint it together okay so if you guys are up to the challenge i know there's quite a bit of stuff there but it's probably no harder than miguel okay miguel's actually a little more intricate uh subtle subtle differences that make it a little more difficult but as far as the drawing part of it if you did miguel today you'll be fine with that one all right, background colors, here we go. I'm going to grab, first thing I'm gonna do, anytime I do a background, I do the same thing I do that when I start painting the inside of something. I will outline everything first. I'm taking this half inch brush, I'm gonna take some of my dark blue and I'm gonna go around all of Miguel's head and body and the guitar. So I'm just taking a little bit of water and mixing it in with my blue because uh, the blue's been sitting there for a bit, so it's dried out just a, a, a touch. So again, taking a little bit of water, mixing it in to that blue, and then I'm gonna come over and I'm going to outline everything. So this Facebook music 
It's getting a little old. It's about the seventh time that I play this stuff since I found it, since I discovered it. And of course, it's the same song. They don't have like a whole lot of variety. But it's getting a little old. Facebook does not allow you to play anything on your videos that is copyrighted. Their algorithms are such that will go through there and when they find it, they'll either mute your video or they'll delete it. So I had that happen when I first started doing these videos. We we're playing live music, not live music, we were playing music from like Spotify. And I think the rule is if you play more than 30 seconds of a particular song, if it's copyrighted, you can't play. So anyhow, some people told me that if I put a message saying, hey, I don't own the rights to this song, you know, that you'd be safe, but that's not the case. I looked up the rules and that does, does not happen. Facebook doesn't care. If you don't own the copyrights, you're not allowed. So anyway, that's why I'm playing this stuff. But like I said, it's the same music, same whatever, 20 songs. <laughs> There's more than that. But, okay, so once I've done the outline, once I've got that outline in place, I can come on through with a bigger brush, and I'm going to go through here and do this. Big, broad, long strokes, because I don't have to worry about it getting into McGill's uh, into Miguel's body, his hoodie, etc. Right? Once I've outlined it, this is a lot, of, a lot easier of a process. So it's going to go through here, and uh, with this one-inch brush, quickly go through here and uh, paint the background. So my paint's dried a little bit. This blue's been sitting in the on my plate for a minute, so it's dried. And some of it's gotten a little kind of kind of chunky, clumped together. And here a moment ago, when I brushed alongside the edge here over by the left side of the painting, the left side of, near the hoodie, I got some a big clump of that blue paint that landed on the inside of the hoodie. Right? Things like that are going to happen sometimes. So those are easy to, easy to fix. So for those of you that are new to acrylic painting, I'm going to show you guys how you get rid of that. Okay, I'm simply going to come over with my paper towel here, and right here where this blue is, right in this little corner, I'm just going to scrape it off. There's a little bit of residue, residual blue left. I can go through with a paper towel that's a little bit wet and rub right over the top of that, and that'll come off. Or, because there's so little of it, I can simply take some red and go right over the top of that. And that's, that's what I'm gonna go with, just like that. All right. All right, so work on that background for a little bit and take a look to see if there's any new comments and new questions or anything like that. In a moment, I'm gonna come in with some pink down toward the bottom, some of that bright pink that I've got, and I'm gonna add it over the top, the top of that blue. Cindy DeSoto, how's it going? First time she says, how are you? Michelle Northrup, welcome back. Glad you ladies are loving it. Thank you for being here.
Uh, Lisa Marie Graham, yes. You can always go back and watch the video. It will be available after um, after the live is over. Hannah Herrera, yeah. So what I noticed is that some of the streamers, what they do is, I think they, maybe the only, they, they jump from one song to the next pretty quickly. So I think that as long as you don't play more than 30 seconds of a song, you're okay. So you, let's say you put together a hundred different songs and you only played 29 seconds of each one, I think you're okay, right? If you went from one to the, to the other, I think you'd be all right. But um, I don't know. I mean, I'd love to try that. And so I'm almost afraid of taking a risk though because then my video is blocked, right? So, so I can't share the live version. It wouldn't allow me to share the uh, live version, but um, anyhow, yeah. It'd be awesome because it's cool. Otherwise, I have to do the... Otherwise, you know, Zoom sessions, for example, are different. On Zoom, I can play whatever I want. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, on Zoom, on Zoom sessions, you can play whatever music you want, from what I understand. But um, these live sessions on Facebook and on Instagram, I think YouTube's the same. You can't play any copyrighted music or, again, more than 29 seconds of it or else your video gets flagged. It's a bummer. It's always fun, right, to have some music in the background, even if it's not really loud. You have a really cool selection. Makes it for, makes for a really cool vibe. Yeah, Coco, Lisa Marie Graham says, uh, this is such a fabulous movie, a time, uh, an all-time fave for me and my kids. Yeah, I love this movie. This is such a cool movie. I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I saw it at the theaters a couple of years ago whenever it came out. Uh, it took my nephews and nieces and, you know, um, it was, I think my nieces, I can't remember now, it's been a while. But it was such a cool movie, such, a, such an awesome movie. Um, all the visuals and stuff. So for those of you that maybe didn't know, a couple of weeks ago we did Dante. I think it was last week, Dante, his dog Dante. So I have a video up for Dante blown around. If you guys would like to go back and look for that, that tutorial is still available. All right, so now I'm going to take some of this bright pink. Same brush. I don't need to, I don't need to do anything with it because the blue and the pink are going to mix a little bit. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to add this pink right over the top. Now the background, just like with everything else that I've talked about, sometimes you've got to do more than one layer for it to really stand out, for it to really pop. Okay, I don't want you guys to stress about trying to make everything all look super perfect and uniform on this first step. Um, it's a, again, it's a process of layering. So, and then this pink that I'm using is really transparent. It's a really bright um, fluorescent pink that's especially transparent. So I really gotta be patient with this. I gotta layer it. But that is the way acrylic paint works. Oil paint is, is a little like that as well, but acrylic paint is really transparent and um, yeah, it requires layering for you to get a really intense or even color. So if you guys haven't yet and you guys are sitting there working on that background, you want to add some white. I don't know that I mentioned this part before, so I apologize. Before you add the white to the guitar, we're going to take some of this blue, some of the background color, whatever color you're using, and you're going to come inside on the on these holes on the guitar. Again, these are eye holes, right, for uh, to make it look like a like a skull.
So again, yeah, folks, if you guys want to go check it out, Dante's available. You guys can go back and check that out. It's about a maybe, I think it took us like an hour. This one's a lot more complex, right? So it takes longer, but Dante was about an hour's worth of, we draw Dante and then we go through and paint them, so. And then I got other things like SpongeBob and uh, Squidward, where you got some cool, like a little octopus and uh, We've got some llamas, all kinds of cool little paintings. So again, folks, you're gonna let that background dry now. Once you've done the done one layer on the background, you wanna move away from it. You can, at this point, you can go and add another layer to Miguel's sweater to make it stand out more, which is what I'm about to do. You could add another layer of color on his hair. We're almost, we're almost done here. We got about another maybe 15 minutes to go. Even if your painting doesn't look completed to you, remember, like let's say yours looks like this, right? Where it's kind of blotchy or transparent. It's not uniform. All you would need to do is add another layer of paint over the top and it gets a lot more solid and intense. So check this out. So like down in here, if I come in here with more red, look at the areas that I'm adding this new layer of red to, it gets a lot more intense. Right now it starts to really stand out and there's a big difference between this and this. So if I wanted to, I could come in here and do a third layer. Once this one dries, I'll do it again. Whoops, and I got a little bit of black paint on my, on my brush. So let me see if I can take that out of there. So But yeah, so if we did a third layer, it would become that much more intense. So in a moment, after I do this, I'm gonna go through and outline some parts of the things on his, uh, on his sweater to make some, things, some of those areas stand out a little bit more. Whoops, there goes my paint plate. Luckily, I got a big old paper uh, cloth combination to protect the floor. Otherwise, I'd have paint all over that, all over the floor. So for some of you new people, I hope you guys come back. For some of you that have been painting me for a while, I really, really do appreciate you guys being here often. It's always, you know, fun for me to introduce new painters to this stuff, but for those of you that keep coming back, you know, it sounds to me like you're enjoying yourselves, you're having fun, and so that means a lot. So thank you guys. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take my little skin brush. So I am going to be doing, I think it's Jacob that's ask, asking the question, I am going to be doing a YouTube live stream. I haven't done any there yet, but I am going to be doing some live streams on YouTube. I know some people prefer that platform. Same thing with Instagram. My painting tutorials on have been around since about April, late April, I think it was, I can't remember now. Maybe it was late March. But um, I've only been doing them on Facebook, but I will eventually start doing them here pretty soon, I hope, on Instagram and YouTube. All right, here we go. This little line right here down the middle of his sweater. Okay, there we go. Right here with the hoodie. Where the outline of the hoodie is right in here. The right side also. And then where his sleeves are, where his arms are. Let's see anything else. 
have you do a little bit around the, like the shoulders. Anything you outline is gonna make, is gonna stand out. Oh, well, what I'm forgetting. I actually wouldn't add this till the very, so I'm done with the background, but these little guys here on the, on the neck of the guitar, these little guys where you adjust the strings, right? And what those are, I'm gonna go ahead and do them now. Even though my background, ideally I'd go back and do another layer of color before I did this. But what these are, these just basically look like, almost like little T's. Actually, I'm gonna, it's gonna be too dark for you guys to see there, but they're basically like this. So here's my guitar, here's my guitar. Right, and that goes like this. These little guys on the ends are just, there's three on each side. That's what that would look like, okay? Again, that's on this. That's these guys here. This would be the very last thing that I would do before I actually sign the piece. So this right here, because that's those guys. So the last step, my background isn't dry yet, not dry enough to, for me to do another layer over everything. But once the lay, this background layer dries, I would go back and do another one over that, right? To make sure that everything is then really solid, much more solid. It becomes much more like this. I could also take a blow dryer right now and come over and dry it all, dry it all out and do it again. Um, maybe we'll try that. Let me go ahead and grab my blow dryer here. Give me a sec. To save time, I will often use a blow dryer to Okay, so now this blue part is all dry. The pink areas down here that paint slightly different, more slimy consistency. So this would take a little longer of me doing that with the with the um, you know with the dryer. So I'm not going to go to those lengths, but I would now I would be able to go in here and do another layer of that dark blue. Now again, just like with Miguel's sweater, what happens is when you add that second that next layer, and I'm not going to do the whole thing, but let's say for example, if you guys take a look up here. Watch what happens now. A lot more, a lot darker, a lot more intense. So layering is very important, depending on what it is, what you want your outcome to, to be. Okay. So I would go through and do this all the way throughout, and then my background would stand out really, really nicely. Then I would go ahead and do those little things on the guitar. But anyway, folks. We got about five minutes to go here. I'm gonna be here for a little bit while you guys, if you guys have any questions or anything, please put them in the comments. Don't forget, send me pictures of your stuff. Like I said, I'd love to see your um, your pictures. Now I've got a whole bunch of pictures from past, past month's events, past month's events. I just haven't been able to post them. I just haven't had time. So eventually I do plan on posting a bunch of these pictures. So, you know, um, you guys want me to share your, yours? Send me pictures. Okay, so, but I'm just gonna be tidying up here in the background a little bit, and I'm gonna come back and look at the comment section, see if you guys have anything for me. You can, um, oh, really quick, you can send me pictures through Messenger. Or you could leave them in the comments for these um, on these videos. Janet 
So Lisa Aguilar says, my daughter enjoys drawing painting with you. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for being here. And you know, I just want to thank all you guys. Um, uh, it's just, you know, such a cool thing to have so many people on here painting along, drawing along, enjoying art. It is pleasure fun to teach people to do this stuff. I mean, a lot of people get really intimidated by, by this stuff, but, but with, with practice and with time, there's, you just get better, okay? So I always encourage people to, to go for it. Um, even if you feel like you're not good at it, just do it. It's, um, art can be really relaxing, you know, it can be therapeutic. There's all kinds of benefits to, to art. So I always, always, always tell people to get creative and uh, get involved. So I appreciate you guys that are here. Rosemary Alonso. Awesome. Glad you're enjoying it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Looking through the comments to see if I've missed anything from anyone. <laughs> Elizabeth Coria Coria says she says in Spanish she says me está quedando bien woohoo which basically translates to mine's coming out woohoo <laughs> that is funny super cool super super cool you got it wonder of course, Jennifer, you can watch the replay. Okay, you can always watch the replay. Thank you, Sandra. Sandra says, great class. Thank you, I do appreciate that. But all right, folks, let's go ahead and start wrapping things up. If you're not done, don't worry about it. Keep working, keep doing your thing. You can, like I mentioned earlier, the video is available, so you can go back and review parts that you might have missed, or maybe I went a little quickly over. You can always do Miguel all over again, paint Miguel all over again, and as many times as you guys would like. So, um, you know, just make sure you guys understand that the video is going to be up for a little while. At least a couple of weeks. Okay? So, thank you guys once again. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of the day. I hope to see some of you guys on the event tomorrow. That one's going to be a fun one. The uh, Day of the Dead one. Really, really cool. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I don't have the painting to show you. But go back in the events page. Go back to my page and look at the event for tomorrow and you'll see what I'm talking about. You're going to need a Sugar School cutout for that. And there's a pre-prep video, not so anything too crazy, but there's a pre-prep video to get you guys ready for that event. So take a look at those. And then um, if you guys are interested, send me an email to get your uh, sugar school. Like I said, today is the cutoff. Today, 10 p.m. Pacific time is the cutoff for that sugar school. All right. Thank you so much, folks. Really appreciate you guys being here. Don't forget the virtual tip jars for those of you that can and would like to help support the page that would be amazing and greatly appreciated but absolutely not necessary necessary so don't stress out if for whatever reason you cannot that's okay okay thank you guys i will see you guys all very soon bye bye now